Well, Mr. Lang, do you feel we're in for another depression? Uh, there is no escape as far as the world is concerned. To my mind, there is no escape from another depression. And when it occurs, the depression of 29 to 32 will be a mere circumstance because it will make your hair curl. What do you base this on, sir? I base it on this, that the present world today doesn't know where it's going financially. That the, uh, the dollar is the only reserve medium you have is valueless. If America had to meet all her debts, I don't think she could pay 10 cents in the dollar. The, uh, all, the, all the great men of the financial world, the 10 great reserve banks of the Western world as we know it, that's a non-communist world, they met and they tried to find a solution for the depression they see coming. And they decided that they would issue, where they had millions of fictitious money, they'd issue billions of it. And they, all the reserve banks and all the countries of the world are entitled to that money and they're taking it and they're using it. They, uh, they've got that, they, America tried, no dreadful position she's in, she tried to get that agreement for five years. They said, no, we don't know what will happen long before that, but we'll gamble on three years. Now, that's been going on for pretty well 18 months, and we've about 18 months to run, in my view, before the, for, before the financial world of the collapses, and in that financial collapse of, collapse of the whole of the Western world, Australia is in it. Do you feel the current number of strikes and price increases is and, contributing to this? The you. number of strikes by unions in Australia is, is bringing this about? No, I don't think so at all. I think you're all on the wrong track. The reason of strikes is because people are not getting paid sufficiently and justly for their labour. If you go back, I'd challenge anybody to go back, all your economists, to go back 30 years and take your present dollar. Take it as worth 100 cents in the dollar. Today, it wouldn't be worth, and it is not worth, 25 cents in the dollar. That will be proved by the government, a Commonwealth statistician. If you look at their... Uh, retail price uh, prices and the consumer prices indexes. Look at that and you'll find if you went back exactly that your dollar today would be worth 25 cents. Now you, that's the dollar. Some people get misled. But if you have $100 a week coming into your home, each dollar is reduced by 75%. That cannot continue. You have been attributed to uh, providing some of the, the best things that unions now have, uh, shorter hours, etc. Yes. Do you, do you feel that unions are moving in the right direction still? Yes. I believe the world is going to move for this, this if I may preface that remark by making it clear what I mean. People talk about unemployment, about production, and when a man falls out of work, they talk about the loss. Well, if there is any truth in that at all, that less working hours or, or strikes are producing less. Then look at this. Every man's labour, every woman's labour, every artist and every skilled man's labour is a mere bagatelle, his, his actual labour or her actual labour, to what that labour is plus the machinery. So that production, when you apply labour to machinery, Production has increased, I should say, 99%. Now, all the year around, every hour of the year, that machinery is only employed for about 25 or 30 hours a week. Where's the immense amount of wealth that is not used because machinery is stopped, not by strikes, but by bad management? Briefly, do you have any advice for present-day government leaders? Advice? In, in so much as uh, the inflationary trends that we're facing. They don't know what it means. They have no idea. Every one of these, what you would call, I suppose, and what the newspapers would call government leaders, they're all depending on bureaucrats. They're all doing what they're told to do. I said it, I don't know that there's a single leader in Australia today that is blessed or cursed, just as you look at it, with imagination, with any ideas, with any dedicated 
incentive in their makeup to help their fellow man or to help their country. So you'll have to, if you want any cures under present day carrying on, you'll have to get the bureaucrats. Because as soon as a man becomes a premier prime minister, look at the band Dunstan in South Australia. Look at every one of them. As soon as ever they get there, they say, now you've got to take a trip around the world, sir. And if the prime minister goes, and who won't, when he goes, who carries on the country? That's the man who carries on all the work, every day, every moment, all the year around. And all of the other man who comes in, he comes in and, and he's told what, what, what would be the right thing to do, and he does it. But if you have a man with ideas of his own, and he says to the bureaucrat, I want to carry this out, I want shorter working weeks, I want this reform, I want this legislation, I want to do this for my country, I want to help the underdog, I want to help the poor man. In it, he takes a blast to fit. Who are they? But if a man comes along and got those ideas in his mind and is determined to do it, he's got to tell the bureaucrat, I want this done. And if the bureaucrat says he won't do it, then do, do as I did. Say, well, you're, you're gone. Somebody else takes your place. Mr Lang, it's been honoured to speak with you.